pet fly this week. This is the Grizzly King. It's kind of similar to the Abbey that I did last week. Uh, a little bit different tail material, green floss instead of red. Grizzly, obviously, for the Grizzly King uh, hackle instead of brown. But it has a mallard wing, and part of the reason I chose it is last week when I did the Abbey, I showed you kind of a quick, easy way to get what would be more of a matched wing look to this, especially for the, the gray mallard flank. It, it can be kind of tough to get the right feathers to get a really, really nice looking matched wing. This one, as you can see, is not matched and it is kind of slapped together a little bit more. And this is a little bit different way that you can do the wing on these. The idea being is that with your mallard flanks, you get a lot of different feathers that some aren't the best for matched wings and things, and they can be finicky. You don't have to make every fly just perfect. There is a big difference between making a fly that is for show that you want to frame or you want to give away as a gift or take pictures of or whatnot and making a fly that you want to throw. In other words, even though this wing doesn't look the best in the world, when this is going through the water and laying back like this and flowing with the fly, it is going to work just as well as a matched set of mallard flanks in the wing. So this fly, similar to the Abbey, has a little bit different technique for creating the wing, something that might be a little bit easier for people who are just getting into wet flies and working with mallard flank. That's kind of the idea behind it. That's the Grizzly King, and I'll go ahead and get started. Start our Grizzly King by putting our hook in the vise. This is a must add 33.99. This is in a size 8. Go ahead and debarb the hook. I'm going to start by attaching my thread. I'm using two different colored threads on this one is a white and one is a black. They're both a uni 8 aught. I'm going to attach the white thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. And then advance down the hook shank and touching turns until I get to the point of the hook. This gives me a nice smooth underbody. At this point, I'm going to tie in the tail. For a tail on this, I'm using some goose shoulder. There's a lot of different materials that you could use for this. I think the traditional just said a scarlet hackle. As a wet fly, a lot of times the uh, goose shoulder or duck quill are used in a lot of different wet flies. However, you can use just some red rooster saddle hackles if you want. Again, depends on if you're wanting to tie a fly that is more for show or versus throwing it and fishing it. If you're wanting to tie something quick, you know, and not with not too much fuss into it, then some red hackle fibers from a rooster saddle hackle or something like that would be just fine. I measure this about a hook length long. Tie that in, anchor that in with about a half dozen wraps. Notice that I'm working away from the point of the hook down the shank. I'll trim this to the length of the body. Now I'm going to tie in my rib. For a rib, I'm using a Danville's gold and silver mylar tinsel in a size 16 and 18. It 
attach that to the hook with the silver side up. Again, wrapping down the hook shank a couple, two, three turns to secure that. Now I'll tie in the, the floss body. I'm using a Danville four strand rayon floss in a Kelly green. This is a little bit dark, I think, for your average Grizzly King, but it's the only green that I have that's closest to green as opposed to being chartreuse. I will attach this along the hook shank. Again, keeping the floss the length of the body. And attach that in with a couple, two, three turns going down the hook shank to the end of the body. And then I'll come forward in nice touching turns. I don't want to pull too hard on this because I don't want to twist everything along the hook shank. I want to keep it a nice smooth underbody. Floss body in. that's secured to the hook, I'll trim away the excess. Now I can apply the rib. I've got one turn at the end of the body and then five evenly spaced turns as I work my way up the hook shank. this stage, I'm going to change over to the Uni 80 in black. space off just a little bit. Now I'll tie in my throat. For the throat on this, I'm just using a grizzly hen. This is actually a whiting 4B hen cape. Um, it's simply because the, the barbs on these are nice and long. Um, they're fairly soft. If you don't have a, a grizzly hen and all you've got is a rooster, I think that would probably be just fine. I prefer softer barbs on my wet flies. I'm going to take a pretty good length from one side of the feather, peel it off. Then I will bunch that together. If you want, you could use a schloppen or something like that, or even on this, you could take both sides and fold it so you have a nice fanned throat here. I don't think it's that important. I think if it's as long as it's dense enough on the underside here, it will fan out well enough. It looks good. Trim away the excess. And then I will smooth off the head space as I lash down those cut ends. And now I'm ready for the wing.
Now, as I mentioned, when tying in the wing, you get your package of, of uh, mallard flank generally comes in loose feathers like this. And as I mentioned in the, doing the Abbey uh, a week ago, a lot of these feathers that you get are not very good quality for something like this. They're sparse on one side or they're curved, very sharp. And um, if you're wanting to have, say, you know, a nice matched wing that, that sweeps up real nice, it's, it can be difficult with the mallard flank, at least this type of mallard flank. You can get select mallard flank for that, but for loose mallard flank, it can be kind of difficult. I showed one technique last week for creating a wing that works pretty well. There's also another technique, and this I like to refer to this more as just kind of a the fishing fly version of a, uh, a wing, and that is basically you find a feather that is pretty pretty even on the ends here. So when you end up processing it, all of them, all of the barbs are going to be fairly even. And rather than trying to match that to bring that out, fold it and match it all together. I just take this, kind of roll it in and fold it in on itself until I get what I like to equate more as kind of a post of mallard flank here that's all bunched together. Sometimes your first feather will work, sometimes it won't. If you've got a little bit of it fans out a little bit, sometimes that works for you. Other times it doesn't doesn't quite go in as well. And you have to either work with it kind of like this or put it up here. And I get this curve going up on it like this. I get the tips about halfway down the tail. And then when I roll that together on top, do a pinch wrap to collect it, I can put in a few wraps to hold it and see what it looks like. And in this case, it works well enough. Now, if you look at it, it's not matched up real nice. And it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't look great in terms of a, a wet fly wing, but I guarantee you in the water, when this is swinging through the water and this is all folded down along the back here, it's gonna look just as good swinging in the water as it would if it was a nice matched wing. Again, this is just kind of a, a quick and dirty way, I'm gonna secure that a little bit more, to get a wing with this loose mallard flank. As I mentioned in the beginning, you can certainly tie the Grizzly King and any of these wet flies in a manner that is excellent for showing. They look great. But at the same time, there are little steps you can take. As I mentioned with the tail, instead of doing goose, you could just use some red hackle fibers and, and just slapping a wing in just by bunching that mallard flank up. Gives you a fly that is every bit as fishable, works just as well. And if you end up losing it on a rock or on in the tree or something like that, or even on a fish, then you know you haven't put a whole lot of time and effort into it and it it's not I don't want to say a big loss but it's not a big deal so four to five turn whip finish some head cement on there got a little bit too much head cement on there what you can do is you can take another feather just like the tips of one of these grizzly hens, run it down through there and it'll clean all of that glue out of there. So that's the Grizzly King. Wonderful little wet fly. Again, really, really fun to tie, get into a little bit different materials with the goose shoulder. And again, I didn't select excellent goose shoulder or even uh, duck quills so that you end up with a nice, you know, curved tail. 
I just wanted something, a nice scarlet red in the back. But if I wanted to, I would have selected something from a goose shoulder that was much better. I would have maybe selected a better uh, mallard flank or matched something up if I wanted more of a uh, dressed wing. But as I said, when this, this is swimming in the water, this is going to look every bit as good as if I had put another extra five or 10 minutes in this fly. Now in a few minutes, I will, once that head cement is dry, I will come back and put a couple coats of a black lacquer on that. Uh, I like the dark color. It's worth the effort for me. And I think that um, in the long run, it makes it a little bit sturdier fly. So that's the Grizzly King, just a quick version that is tied mostly for throwing a fish and not so much for framing and hanging on a wall. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for joining me at Device today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong. <laughs>